In this video, we're going to learn how we can sample texture data from our scripts and then do something based on the color values. That means we're going to be able to read texture data and understand the colors that come back. We're going to be able to map a one dimensional texture array back to the two dimensional texture. And for fun, we're going to also draw some stuff back onto a texture. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by understanding how to read textures, which has a wide variety of applications. If you're looking for that really quick, just how do I do this? You can see that on the screen right now. You can read the pixel data with get pixels and we can map the coordinates back using these two equations as well. I always like to make there be a practical example for this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start from the center point of the texture, sample some stuff. So whenever you left click, we're going to sample initially that very center pixel group. Once we've sampled that, the longer we hold down the mouse button, the wider we're going to start sampling for. If you're holding left mouse button, we're going to slowly start sampling more and more pixels until we've hit the maximum time, which will then sample the entire texture. We're doing it this way because in the future, really soon, actually, we're going to do exactly this and implement bullet spread on the gun series. This way we can predefine the way that a gun will have the bullet spread go. So if you're interested in learning how to do bullet spread like that, make sure you're subscribed so you can see whenever that video comes out. We're gonna jump right into the code today with a sample texture on click mono behavior that has some serialized fields, a sprite renderer, renderer, a float sample growth time, and we'll set that to be four by default, and a float repeat delay that we'll set to 0.1 by default. We need some cached references here, a private color array of original colors, a private texture 2D, the original texture, and a private texture 2D, the render texture. We'll get into why we need both of those in just a minute. It's really just for our debug UI. So if you're not gonna actually write to a texture, you don't need any any of these three. A private float initial click time and a private float last sample time. On awake we're going to get the original texture from our renderer sprite texture. We're going to create a new texture 2D for the render texture passing in the original texture width, height, format, false, and true. Saying we don't want to generate a MIP chain and we do want it to be in linear color space. We're going to get the original colors from original texture .get pixels. Then we're going to set the render texture pixels to the original colors and we're going to apply those changes. Then we're going to create a new sprite based on this render texture, setting the pivot to be in the center, and then set the sprite render sprite to be this newly created sprite using our render texture. We did all that because we're going to overwrite this so you can see what's happening when we're sampling this texture. You don't have to do this if you're just sampling the texture and you're not writing to it. I'll show you the update loop, but we're not going to spend a lot of time here. We're just whenever we left click and hold, we're going to sample the texture passing in the time that we've been holding down the left mouse button. And when we right click, we're going to reset the render back to the original colors just to get a clean slate again. The really cool thing we're going to do is in that private void sample texture with the float hold time. The high level algorithm we're using here is starting from the center point, we're going to sample pixels of some square size around that center point, sample all of the colors in that rectangle based on the grayscale value. You could use any value, but we're choosing grayscale for this video. We're going to assign that value to be the weight. We'll then pick a random pixel with a weighted value from that grayscale value, and then we can do something on it. In this video, we're just going to sample and then show you which pixel was sampled. So to know that, we need to know half the size of the render texture, and then we're going to calculate half square radius. And we're calculating this radius that we're sampling on based on how long we've been holding down that left mouse button. So we need a square to have at least one radius. I'm using the word radius. I don't know what you call it on a square. Maybe extents is the right word. So it needs to have at least a size of one. So we're starting with mathf.lerp from 0 0.01 to the half size. And we're doing clamp from the hold time over the sample growth time. We'll calculate the minimum X and minimum Y, flooring the half size X and Y, subtracting a half square radius. We're then going to get specific pixels on this texture. So we're going to do color array sample colors equals original texture dot get pixels passing in the min x and min y and then the half square radius times two for the block width and block height. Let's do an example. If we have a texture of size 32 by 32. Half size is going to be 16. Let's say hold time is zero. It's the first click. We're going to get one for half square radius. Half size is 16 minus one gives us 15 on X and Y. We're going to have a two pixel sample size. If you want the first sample to always be the direct center, you can remove this multiply by two when hold time is zero. Starting from index 15 to 16. So it's going to be the center pixel or a pixel around the center. If we say that the sample growth 
cutoff time is four, and we're taking a hold time of two, we'll be sampling from seven, seven. Then we have nine times two for the extents from there. So we'll go from seven plus 18, which gives us up to 25. And that's around half of the texture in the middle. So now that we have the colors, we need to convert that to the grayscale values. So we can get those weighted random values. We're gonna do that with system.array.convertAll, passing in the sample colors, and then a function here that accepts the color, and we're just gonna convert it from color to color.grayscale. That gives us a float value from zero to one. We're then gonna do total gray value equals colors as gray.sum, and this comes from the system.link namespace. We'll sum up all of our values. This is an important number for us to have to apply the weighted random algorithm. We'll do float gray. This is the target value. We're gonna set that to equal random.range from zero to the total gray value. We're then gonna iterate over all of the colors as gray and do gray minus equals colors as gray at that index and check if gray is less than or equal to zero. If it is, we're breaking out of that loop because we know this is the pixel we want to sample. Now, the hard part here is we have a one-dimensional array of colors and we need to map that back to a 2D texture to know which pixel are we sampling. To go back, we can take the minimum X value plus I modulus by the half square radius times two. For the Y, we're doing min Y plus I divided by half square radius times two. That probably doesn't make any sense, so let's break it down. The minimum X is seven, if we're taking the last example. We have seven plus, and then let's say that we sampled, I don't know, the 20X 9Y pixel. So it's kind of at the bottom right-ish quadrant. That's it being index 49. So if we have the min X of seven, we have I of 49, we have modulus, and then nine times two is 18. 49 modulus 18 gives us 13 plus the seven from min Y gives us the X value of 20. Min Y is again seven. I is still 49, but we're doing 49 divided by 18 gives us two and change. An integer division gives us two plus the seven gives us nine. That gives us a pixel at 20X 9Y. I'll leave this log statement in here so you can see it, but ultimately you'd want to remove that from your code. Now that we know the pixel that was sampled, we can do whatever we want to do with this value. In an upcoming video, we're going to use this to do bullet spread, where these types of patterns will determine where a bullet will go. But today what we're going to do is just show the rectangle that we're sampling data from and the pixel that was being selected. So we're gonna reset the render texture. I'm gonna call this function set rec pixels, which is just drawing a red square. And then we're gonna set the particular pixel we just chose as green, because that's the winner, right? We do apply to apply those changes and we can see that in the scene. I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to show your support, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. At the phenomenal tier level, there's Andrew Bowen. And at the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Paul Berry, and Rulin. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. There's only one thing you need to do in the editor to make this work. Make sure that you have the texture selected that you want to use. Change the import settings to enable read write. If you don't do this, whenever you try to read the texture data, it's going to give you an error. To use a script, including the demo, all you need to do is create a sprite and drag that sprite to that sprite render reference on the script. In our demo scene that's included in the repository, I have three of these attached to the camera and just dragged all the references over there. You can see as I hold left mouse button that the red circle gets larger over time based on the sample growth time. And we can see each frame that gets selected, which pixel was chosen based on that grayscale value of the weight. Those of you who are really keen on performance probably noticed that every time that we call get pixels, that returns us a new array of colors. That's not great for our performance because that's a GC alloc each time, but it is very convenient to use whenever we're not too concerned about getting that color array generated. It's very convenient that we get only the colors that we're interested by using get pixels, but if you really want to remove that GC alloc, what you can do is use a function called get raw texture data. That gives you an array that is just a pointer to the colors that we already have in memory. So that way we're not getting that GC alloc, but it does give you the entire array. So you have to find the right indexes to use based on whatever you're trying to find. Luckily, we already know how to go from a one dimensional array to a 2D point on the texture. So we can do that pretty easily there with what you've learned today as well. If you got value out of this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday and I'll see you next week.